Hey everybody. In this video, I'm going to give you a, an anti-French weapon, potentially. But more importantly than that, I'm going to take you through my current um, approach to selecting openings for the intermediate club level. And, well, just for me, really. And, um, and show you how I'm right now preparing my own studies on leeches using the new interactive study variation. So, um, so I'm starting to think and uh, get very excited about my, my very first over the board competitive game, which is a week on Thursday. And uh, I'm already starting to go through my head. Well, am I going to have the white pieces? Am I going to have the black pieces? Um, if I have the white pieces, what am I going to play, etc, etc. So um, I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to go with the Danish for, you know, for white um, if I get e4, e5, right? But then I'm, I'm thinking, well, let's go through my repertoire. What am I going to play? I just don't know because it's, it's a lot more serious when I'm sitting down for a 75 minute each way game. That's two and a half hours of very serious play. And I don't just want to toss out an opening. So, um, got me to thinking, well, what if I face the French, okay? Um, and I'm still kind of looking around. You, 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 you face the French quite often. So, for me, as e, with e4, um, I faced as white. I faced e5 most of the time, all right? Um, then some Sicilians, but French comes in third with 600 games. Right, so it's it's a possibility. E5, I'm, I'm quite comfortable. I might go Vienna, I might go Danish. C5, I'll probably go Grand Prix. You know, um, E6, the French. Now, I've played the French quite a lot, so uh, I played it for a year year or so. So I got to looking. If I'm black, and I play the French, what have I faced before? And, and I, was, I was thinking about, I'd love to get, bring it into the Freddy repertoire. So, you know, what can you throw out F, F4 straight away on the second move? And it has been played against me, right? This is La Bordonnée variation. And I've seen it 33 times and I've won 61 of those games now. So, but that doesn't mean it's bad, all right? That's just my personal history playing Blitz and Rapid below 1500, okay? Now, um, from this point, I'm starting to think, okay, well, you know, I've played like D5 nearly all the time because that's what French players do, right? And then we've seen various responses, okay? Now, then I checked out the analysis board on Leeches and I came across this. So I look at it on Lee Chess, which is a much, much bigger sample, much bigger database of, of games. And in the French, you know, E4, E6, La Bordonnée variation with F4, and they will nearly always play, here it gives you the percentages, 70% of the time, they'll throw out D5, because they're a French player, is what they do. Now, here you can get an advanced variation. Um, you can take on e5, but then look down here. Well, bugger me, right? Um, f5, da, 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 knight, c3. This is the one that I'm looking at. I'm looking for where does white score the highest, okay? Um, you have to make sure that you're looking for the color that you're going to be. Okay, white scores best here with knight c3. And this is called the pelican variation, okay? Now, flicking back to chess.com, I've never seen knight c3. In all my time playing the French, right, I've, I've faced La Bordonnée variation how many times? With f4, 33 times, okay? So how many French games have I had? I've played e6 over a thousand times, okay? So a thousand games, I've never faced this move. Never, ever, ever, right? There's no games of this position found in the database. So, interesting. And that's a clue. I've never seen it in a thousand games. And it scores well uh, for... Hang on. Where are we? So, da-da-da-da-da. 
French, and we go here, yeah. So it scores 48% for white. Okay, now, that is then enough, because that kind of fulfills my criteria. My criteria are, I want to get my opponent out of their comfort zone and into my preparation as quickly as possible. And I don't necessarily need to look for the absolute best lines. I mean, here it gives black already a slight edge, half a pawn, right? But at my, at my level, that doesn't mean anything. Really doesn't mean anything. Um, what really matters is real world, world performance, okay? Now, if it was plus minus two, minus two and a half, that's, that's a different matter. That's a, a serious advantage. Half a pawn is neither here nor there because games go like this. So that is then enough for me to go, well, let's, ex let's explore it a bit more. So then I create a study in Lee Chess and we'll go, okay, Pelican Exchange. And this is the Pelican, <clears throat> which I never saw in a thousand games as a French player. And if they take, now what we do is we fire up Stockfish, but we're more interested in the, the player's database. Now, Bishop C4 does quite well here with 62% win rate, okay? Um, but that's only from 34 games, so you can't really take that to the bank. By far, 98% of the time, Knight takes here. And what's more, the engine says Knight should take. Anything else is better. So I, I think we would go with that, right? Um, and of course, I'm going to set this to interactive lesson. Okay. And I'm going to set this one to interactive lesson. Now that one already is. Okay, that's fine. Uh, okay. So what is what are we going to expect here? Well, there's really, out of 10,000 games, there's only two moves. There's knight, knight f6. Okay. So we'll go pelican exchange. Okay. So each line is going to get its own chapter. Pelican exchange, knight f6. Okay. And they're going to do this. And from here, again, what's best? Knight takes f6 check does quite well, um, slight edge for white, and the engine agrees, so that's what we'll do. And they'll take that with the queen. Yep, always. Takes back with the queen, okay. But here's the point. Your French player isn't in France anymore. I mean, he, hasn't, he does not know what is going on here, okay. And here, there's a couple of options. Knight F3 scores well. Over nearly 400 games as well, 55. And the engine agrees. Wow, knight f3 looks like we're gambiting a pawn. So queen takes f4, yeah, most of the time. Okay. And then we can play d4. No, but or bishop e2, or, you know. So th this is how I'm working it out, right? And I'm literally just doing this live because I haven't explored this. Machine says d4. Everything else just hasn't been played enough. D4, control the center, it's principled stuff. Right, slight edge for black, but here's the point. Um, queen e4 check is the most common move here. And white is winning 54% of the time. Um, with bishop e2, we're winning 58% of the time. Okay, so here the position is equal, but I know, I know where I am here, right? I'm in relatively familiar territory. I've got rid of the f-pawn. I'm probably going to castle short, yeah? Um, and what I'll tend to do here is just kind of use the most popular lines, okay? Castles is the only move for white here, and we're still equal, but we've got a nice development lead, okay? They will play knight c6 most of the time, and here, c3 or rook e1, or a3, it can't make up its mind. Um, let's go c3. They're all good. Or king h1. There's, there's, there's all kinds of good moves here. So that is a nice, you know, that is a line. Now, let's go, we'll go with another pelican exchange. So we'll go back to knight c3, takes, takes. And then here there were knight f6 and knight d7. So we'll do a new one. Pelican exchange, knight d7, wasn't it? Oop. Knight e7, I dare say. No, it is knight d7. 
So Pelican Exchange 97. And then I have to rebuild it. But this is, this is fine for me because this is all good practice, okay? So we go Labolder name. There we go, knight c3, and then knight to d7. Let's just rearrange these. Knight to d7 is, hang on, takes, takes. Then knight to d7 is the second most popular move. But this is inaccurate already. So you can see that it goes from minus 0.2, which means black has a tiny edge, to white has a tiny edge. So I'm just going to mark this as dubious move. And then here we play queen e2 according to the engine or knight f3. In practice, which does best? Does nobody play queen e2? Nobody plays queen e2. Interesting. Knight f3 is okay, but actually just slightly better for white. So let's explore this queen e2 thing, right? This has been played, yeah, a few times. <coughs> if they play knight to f6 and so on and so forth. So I'm looking for a line here that gives white an advantage. Now in practice, black's, black does well from here, but there's only 20 games, right? So I'll tell you one thing, my opponent is not going to be ready for something like this. So knight f6, knight g to f6 is by far the most common. And here we're going to take and the knight will recapture yeah, all the time. And here, you know, it's, it's kind of equal. But again, I'm in the territory that, that I may be slightly more prepared for. Okay, so that's it really. Um, well, let's, uh, while we're here, we'll have a quick look at the Pelican Advance variation. So we go La Bordonnet. They will play this. We play that, that here. And instead of that, they're going to advance the pawn and hit the knight. Now, what do we do? Again, that's slightly inaccurate. Yeah. So we've gone from 0.5, so I'll just say dubious move. All right. And then knight down to e2. It's been played practically all the time. Engine agrees. This is the move. Yeah. And I know now that my French player is not getting a French game. They're not going to get anything that they've ever recognized. Okay, they're going to play c5 all the time because they're a French player. And then from here, we can play knight g3. Does very well over thousands of games. Um, the machine says knight f3 is better, but in practice, knight g3. So we'll go knight g3. Right? And, and that's basically it. And then what I can do is I'll, I'll go through it and I'll make sure that I give myself the proper hints. So let's just go through this then. So we go da da. Now, yeah, um, we'll, so for the hint here, la bordonne. Okay, and and now the uh, pelican signature move with knight c3. Okay, uh, no, it's not. That's on the next turn. So our French player is going to do this, aren't they? Okay, now we do it. Now the Pelican signature move and advance and natural pivot, right? And this, this move is actually will be quite familiar to French players because they, they quite often end up doing this as well. And not only that opening. So most common now C5 is played nearly all the time because obviously French players and then knight g3. So the point here is not to this is to, to tell you what to do when you're practicing this. The point is to help you to understand the why. Okay, so we're going to open up, uh, continue our trek, open the light square bishop, and defend e4. Right, so that, I mean, that's an idea. That's the reasons, some of the reasons behind the move. So we're going to do this move. Okay, computer says that oh, could have been better. And then in real life, they're gonna play knight c6. And now what are we gonna do? It's kind of equal. And knight f3 scores very well, bishop c4 scores very well. Um, either looks good actually. So let's develop, don't know. 
doesn't doesn't really matter here. Um, also, A3, A3 is over 100 games, 69 win rate. That's not bad at all. Computer says knight to h3. Wow, what the huh? Nobody plays that. Oh, it's been played nine times with a 78% win rate. Okay, well, do you know what? Let's go with that one. But somewhere weird. Okay, well, there's only three squares it can go, and that's the weirdest one. So we're going to go there, and then our opponent will probably play e5, and so on and so forth. So, you know, this, this is not a normal French structure whatsoever. And now, computer says f5, um, push and gain space, right? And, and that's all we need. So now, what I'll do is, I'll go back, and I'll go preview, and, okay, French, yes. And then La Bordonnais, it's giving me the tips. Pelican signature move, yes. Natural pivot, yes. Continue our trek, open up the light square bishop, defend e4. Okay, and that move allows this as well. Right, develop the other knight but somewhere weird, blah. Okay, push and gain space, boom. Right, and we've got a, an equal position but one that is going to be familiar with, to me and not familiar to them. And then what I'll probably do is do play again, and I'll ignore the octopus on the side of the screen, and I'm just going to try and play it through. Okay, La Bordonnais variation, Pelican move, and pivot round, and they do this, and I'm going to carry on with my knight, and now that. If they push, I push on. Right? So I'm just talking to myself, and I'm kind of creating this rhythm of... Uh, you know, when I see this, I'm going to do that. And you can create as many as you want. Like on my Danish uh, study here now, I've got 38 lines. Now each one's got its own chapter. But this is just really, really useful. I've been through maybe 15 of these or something this morning and, and just trained them and drilled them. And this is perfect for me. So there you go. Um, I can't promise that uh, the Pelican is going to be you know, the, the ultimate anti-French weapon. If it were, you'd probably already know about it. But, um, yeah, I, I'm going to keep looking into it a little bit myself. Um, but more, more importantly than that, it's, you know, it's this method of, of how to build your own studies and use them to train yourself that I'm really excited about and hope you are as well. Okay, so uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you later.